Bow guns are the most versatile weapons in Monster Hunter World. They can deal massive damage, tank the worst damage, heal teammates, poison, sleep, paralyze, and inflict elemental damage, all without changing weapons. Light bow guns are the sword and shield of the gunner community. Light and versatile, agile, quick to sheath, you can take on a support role or deal damage. What's up, Hunter community? I'm Belligerent, and this is my guide to normal shot light bow guns and their builds. What often puts people off from gunning? The ammo maintenance. Constantly needing to craft, farm, or buy ammo. In that sense, Normal Shot 2 is about as low maintenance as it comes. Every quest you'll ever play in the game gives you free Normal 2 ammo in your chest, on top of which it only takes Gunpowder 2 to craft. Now it also takes Normal 1 ammo, but in this game that's infinite. And Gunpowder 2 is light on the wallet and easily crafted, so it's safe to say running Normal 2 as your main ammo is about as easy as it gets. That's not even to mention that with rapid fire bow guns, you basically get two for one on your damage. That's right, with a rapid fire gun, it shoots two rounds of the ammo type, the first round hitting for full damage, the next two doing half damage, so for each round spent, you actually get double the damage. Now you probably won't win any DPS awards with normal shot two light bow guns. That award for, bow gu for light bow guns goes to those that can run spread three, but it's still a very reliable damage option and very versatile. I'm not getting into how to use light bow guns in this video or all their features and moves. We're just looking at what guns to choose and different builds for your damage. As I mentioned earlier, light bow guns often take a supportive role, but right now we're just looking at dealing damage and builds to deal more damage. Perhaps a support guide is for another day. First, normal two rapid fire options. These are in no particular order and will save my rankings for the end. First up, we have Karma, one of the more popular choices in the gunning community. It's built primarily from Odagaron parts, so it's available to both console and PC. Now where Karma excels compared to our other contenders is in the affinity column, sporting a 30% natural affinity. The, the final version of this gun requires Teostra Claws, so you won't be able to finish it much earlier than our next contender, which is Cataclysm's Trigger. This is the Nergagante Lightbow Gun, again available on both console and PC. It has higher damage than Karma, but it's zero in the affinity category. It also loses the deviation battle with an average deviation, while Karma has no deviation. Next, we have the Emperor's Shell Blaze. This weapon comes from the Lunastra tree, so not yet available on PC at the time of this video. So until the update is released, PC players will lose out on this puppy. This gun has 20% affinity, but sadly it has average deviation as well. It beats Karma in the attack category, but not Cataclysm's trigger. What really makes this gun one of my top picks is that it also runs rapid fire... Uh, elemental, both fire and ice ammo. So you can run elemental gunning with it as well if you go down that path, but it also excels in the normal two category. It comes with its own skill, so you get an additional skill in your build that you don't even have to add a decoration or any type of armor for, which is guts, which can save your butt given the right circumstances. Finally, the newly released Taroth Blitz Support. You can't craft this bad boy. You have to get it from Kolv Taroth. So it's not currently available to PC. But after that update is released, if you're on PC, you definitely want to get your hands on this. This has zero affinity. Same attack as the Blaze. But where it really shines is that it has double the mag size for normal 2 compared to the other three guns on this list. It has zero deviation. And its reload on normal 2 ammo is fast as where the other three... Reload at normal speed. It also reigns supreme at secondary ammos as it can run all types of different status effects, uh, sleep, paralysis, uh, things of that nature. But we won't get into all that mumbo jumbo about different ammo types. We are here to talk normal to ammo. As far as numbers go, 
rather than bore you with a lot of math and numbers and this gun did this much damage and that gun did this much damage, which I would love, but would make for probably a pretty boring video. Suffice it to say that the builds I'll be giving you with these weapons all get them within four or five damage points per volley of each other. Now when I say volley, I'm talking about the entire three round burst, not just each separate hit. As I'll always try to do, I'm going to give you options. I'm going to give you a maximized build. This build assumes that you have everything you need. I'm going to give you PC builds, which assumes you don't have access to any of the downloadable content armor or uh, weapons, but that you have all the decorations that you need. And then I'm going to offer you a starter set, a set that works without any decorations, allows you to decorate as you can, because I can't guess what decorations everybody has. Uh, so if you are new to the game, new to gunning, whatever, uh, that set will be fairly easy for you to make and you don't have to stress out about what decorations that you have. First, let's talk skills. Because what's more important to me than just giving you a build is helping you understand what makes a build work so that you can adjust based on your playstyle and available equipment and decorations. When it comes to damage with Normal Shot 2, there are four skills that are going to increase your damage. The Normal Shot skill, Attack Boost, Peak Performance, and Critical Boost. Because all the guns we will be using run at least one elemental ammo, we can't use the non-elemental boost. And Resentment doesn't really fit into our builds, plus you'll be playing at range so you won't get that, mu that much chip damage anyway. An agitator just isn't available on enough armor equipment to make it viable, at least not under the conditions of this guide. So for maximum damage output, we want to try to max those skills. Plus, because critical boost only increases damage when we crit, we want to try to maximize our chance to crit. So for these builds, we are working around a premise that the build must place us at 100% crit at weak points. Skills that increase our affinity that we will be focusing on are critical eye, maximum might, weakness exploit. Maximum might is great for gunners because at level 3, maximum might gives you 30% affinity when your stamina is full. And since we will mostly have our stamina bar full, this skill benefits us greatly. Now let's take a look at the build. For our maximum build, we're going to be running Dragon King Eye Patch, Empress Male Beta, Draken Vembraces Alpha, Empress Coil Beta, Draken Greaves Alpha, and we're going to run the Special Shot Charm or the Attack Charm. It's kind of personal preference. I personally use the Special Shot Charm because it boosts my Wyvern Blast by around 20%, as where if I were to use the attack charm, the extra attack levels really only raise each volley by about 4 damage points or so. Now keep in mind, when I talk damage points in this video, I'm talking about damage on the pole in the training area. Uh, your damage is going to vary based on the monster that you're fighting, uh, based on what areas of the monster that you hit, etc., etc., so... My numbers are based on tests run on the pole in the training area. Now those damage points are also going to be per three hit volley, not per individual hit. So when I say that you're only losing about four damage points by not running the attack charm, that's not four damage points per hit, that's four damage points for the entire burst. The choice is yours and should really depend on your play style. If you don't use Wyvern Blast often, then go for the attack charm. I use my Wyvern Blast a lot. Our decorations will vary because each done gun has different requirements and slots. Karma is the most versatile, uh, closely followed by Blaze, uh, because Karma has the 30% affinity, Blaze has 20% affinity, uh, so neither one needs as much affinity skill, which opens up more slots for more damage-oriented uh, decorations in our build. Keep in mind, level 3 weakness exploit gives us 50% affinity when we're hitting weak spots, 
So we only need to be sitting at 50% affinity in order to have a 100% crit chance at weak spots. And since you're gunning, shooting from a distance, and you can kind of shoot your ammo anywhere you want at any time, it's a little easier to hit weak spots than, say, a melee weapon that has to be in the right position within range of their weapon. You just get a kind of point and shoot. So hitting weak spots is much more viable with a gun than with a melee weapon. So the ideal decoration set for Karma is as follows. We're going to run four attack jewels, one force shot jewel, one flawless jewel, one mighty jewel, two critical jewels, and one tenderizer jewels. What this gives us then is max attack boost, max critical boost, max weakness exploit, max peak performance, critical eye 2, max special ammo, normal shot, and maximum might 1. This leaves us sitting at 51% affinity, which is right where we want to be, because when we add in the weakness exploit, 50% uh, at weak points, then we're sitting at 100% at, at weak points on monsters. You may have noticed that my graphic in the video only shows 41% affinity, but keep in mind that we are running maximum might. That is one of those variable stats. Again, we only get the affinity when our stamina bar is full. So your stat page won't show it, but it will show if you hit the start menu while you're just walking around. You'll see the, the increased uh, affinity there. For Cataclysm's trigger, we'll run two attack jewels, one force shot jewel, two expert jewels, one critical jewel, three mighty jewels, and one tenderizer jewel. This gives us attack boost level 5, critical eye level 4, max weakness exploit, max maximum might, critical boost 2, peak performance 2, max special ammo, and normal shot. For Blaze, we run two attack jewels, one force shot jewel, two expert jewels, two critical jewels, one flawless jewel, one mighty jewel, and one tenderizer jewel. This gives us attack boost 5, critical eye 5, max critical boost, max weakness exploit, max peak performance, max special ammo, normal shot, and maximum might level 1. Again, like the other two, this puts us at 100% crit at weak points. And in case you're wondering, this is our highest damage per volley of all of the builds that I'm showing you. But it's not the highest DPS, not the highest damage per second, and I'll explain why in a little bit. Finally, we have the Tarath Assault Support, for which we're going to run one Force Shot Jewel, one Attack Jewel, two Expert Jewels, three Mighty Jewels, two Critical Jewels, and one Tenderizer Jewel. This gives us an Attack Boost 4, Critical I4, Max Critical Boost, Max Weakness Exploit, Max Maximum Might, Peak Performance 2, Max Special Ammo, and Normal Shots. Now a few things to note. You may be looking at this and thinking, well, he has an open slot there, why doesn't he put something else in that slot? My support gun is augmented for a slot. I like that augment with this gun because it gives me flexibility on my builds, but it does not inherently come with the second slot. So for the purposes of this video, I'm working with what you have, which is why I left it open. Second, you technically get one point more damage per volley if you switch out one of the crit jewels for one of the flawless jewels and max your peak performance. However, since it's only one damage, and since peak performance goes away if we take any type of small damage, I personally opt for more critical boost because even if I'm on my deathbed, so to speak, I still get 100% crit at weak spots, and thus I'm still able to crit and boost my damage with critical boost. However... I personally, in my own build, swap in the Flawless Jewel and remove one of the Mighty Jewels. This gives me maximum damage, and I accept that I'm only getting 90% chance uh, crit at weak points. 
If I'm desperate for the other 10%, I can always bring an affinity booster. But since I laid down the rules that these builds must reach 100% critical chance at weak points, that build didn't make the cut. Now our PC builds assume you have no DLC. They aren't quite as optimized, but still work very well. So first the build. We're going to run Dragon King Eye Patch Alpha, Brigade Suit Alpha, Kaiser Vembraces Beta, Valhazat Coil Beta, Nergagante Greaves Beta, and the Attack Charm. Now you can still use the Special Shot Charm for Karma if you wish, but for Cataclysm's Trigger, we're going to need the extra 5% affinity that you're going to gain from reaching attack level 4. Decorations for Karma, with this build... We're still getting the 100% crit at weak points while only losing 6 points of damage compared to the max build that I just showed you. We're going to use 3 attack jewels, 3 critical jewels, 1 force shot jewel, and 1 mighty jewel. This gives us attack boost 6, max critical boost, max weakness exploit, maximum might 2, normal shots, and peak performance 1. For Cataclysm's trigger in this build, we won't quite reach the 100% affinity, but we still reach 91% affinity at weak points. So we'll use one attack jewel, one critical jewel, three mighty jewels, one force shot jewel, and two expert jewels. And finally, our starter build. For our starter build, there's not going to be any decorations except for the I do account for the single attack jewel that every player is given once they reach the point of unlocking decorations. Okay, So what we're going to want to wear is the Nergagante Helm Beta for Maximum Might, Kaiser Mail Beta for Special Shot, Kaiser Vam Braces for Weakness Exploit, Nergagante Coil Beta for the Attack Boost. We're going to run Diablos Nero Greaves Beta for the Normal Shots. And then we're going to run the attack charm. This gives us attack level 6, weakness exploit 2, special ammo boost 2, maximum might 2, and normal shots. Now you can decorate this however you want. If you have the decorations, you can max out your maximum might. You can slot in some peak performance. Things like that. But the point of this build is that it's for anybody just getting into the game or anybody just getting into gunning who don't necessarily have everything available, this build we're maximizing uh, skills just from the armor. So, my final assessment. All of these weapons are completely viable, and with the right build and gems, all reach similar damage levels, so you can't really go wrong. However, the Taroth Blitz support will give you the most DPS. Despite not necessarily reaching as high a damage as some of the others, but the fact that it holds twice as many rounds and has the best reload speed of all of them allows you to do more damage. In a 30 second test with support, I was able to fire 16 times. With the others, I was only able to fire 13 times. That's nearly 20% more damage, simply from a bigger mag and faster reloads. One final note on support. I don't recommend running ammo up on this gun. It changes your mag size from 6 to 8, but in the same 30 second test, I was able to fire the same amount of rounds. Didn't matter whether I had 6 in the magazine or 8 in the magazine because the reload time is so quick, you don't really lose any shots. So if you're running ammo up, you're really sacrificing damage for no benefit. If you don't have support of the other three guns, my preference would be Blaze. Best damage in our builds per volley, plus it's running two different elemental ammos that shoot rapid fire. For PC, currently you only have Karma and Cataclysm's Trigger to choose from. I personally prefer Cataclysm's Trigger. I feel it's more versatile and has better secondary ammo choices. And it has more base damage. But if you're just getting into gunning, 
then karma is much more flexible and forgiving to the learning curve. It fits in more builds. It's a little more versatile because of the 30% affinity. Uh, so it's, it's why you hear a lot of people recommend karma. I don't think you can go wrong with either one. My personal choice is Cataclysm's Trigger, but Karma is... If Cataclysm's Trigger is 1, then Karma is 1A. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I am belligerent. Happy hunting, everyone.